Over 400 online publication sites dedicated to daily churning out of fake news to fight the government have been discovered by the federal government, according to the Minister for Information, Lai Mohammed. Um, well, the minister noted that fake news is taking a new dimension and threatening the existence of the country. He said the debilitating efforts of the mainers was not only on the government, but on every Nigerian. Well, joining me to talk about this is uh, Inibere Ifyong, he's a lawyer, and of course, Emmanuel Morin, who's also a lawyer. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you. All right, I'm going to start with you, um, Inibere. This is not the first time that the federal government is um, you know, saying or alleging that there are people who are trying to overthrow it or topple the government. Um, and they have said that um, people are trying to put out fake information to make the government look bad. So the question that keeps coming to my mind is, why would anybody want to topple this government? Why would anybody want to put out information that would make this government look bad? What could be really responsible for that thought growing in anybody's mind? What I find very astonishing about the comments of the is that uh, I do not understand how, you know, Nigerians will discredit or how will discredit that has no credibility in the first place. It would have been a different thing if this government had But to the best of my knowledge, so for the go for the minister to say that these are online platforms or online sites that are tuning out fake news for the government, just the height of mystery. But then do you don't blame the minister. Things are really tough. That is the Nigerians are suffering. Nigeria has become the poverty capital of the world. The exchange rate has been against the Naira. The Naira is depleting on the rise. The security is rising in the country. People are suffering. Nothing is basically working. So my understanding is that when the next commencement, it may be a deliberate to entertain Nigeria, you know, so to give some form of coming relief sufferings in the country because there is no other way that I can view the government. But beyond that, on a more serious, just very uh, mischievous for the Minister of Information, who himself is an agent of fake news. I said that apology because he has said repeated things that have been false and inaccurate. So should we also blacklist the Ministry of Information or the Federal Ministry of Information as an agent of fake news? So uh, for me, these are comments that should not be used in the public office, let alone the chief person of any serious administration. But again, as I said, this is not a government that is willing to address the issues affecting the country, the issues affecting the citizens. But beyond that, we must also see that as an indication of the continued censorship of the media and the continued shrinking of the civic school. And that is why, as ludicrous uh, as these comments are, we must also pay attention to them. We need to ensure that this regime does not continue to clamp down on the media and does not continue to shrink the civic school. So, to that extent, I, I want to realize that. The media has a constitutional obligation under Section 22 of the Constitution to hold the government accountable. There is also a fundamental right to freedom of expression that is guaranteed under Section 39 of our Constitution. So legally speaking, these, these comments are baseless. Logically, these comments are untenable. Morally, these comments are repulsive. But as I said, for whatever it is what this is just some form of coming relief to give Nigerians who have been so traumatized by this regime something to distract them from suffering that is going on. Let me, let, let me take you up again. 476 online publication sites uh, dedicated to churning out, according to him, fake information to fight the government. And I have to underline, fight the government. Now, my question again, has this government 
um, been open when it comes to information sharing and the line of communication? Has it been open? Have they, have they been free when it comes to us asking for information to be shared with us, the public, so that we can be more informed as to what's happening? Um, again, um, for the government to be able to plug the holes for this fake news or propaganda, how well have they themselves managed information um, you know, going from there, from the from government quarters to the people. Clearly, this is not a government that this is not a government that is transparent. This is not a government that is willing to open its books for scrutiny. So, for when the minister comes out to say, "Oh, that people are devoting pla online platforms fake fake news to discredit the government," what is clear is that we do not want anybody to question us because, in the real sense. What this government is, is against is not really fake news to say. The government is against fake news. Then that itself will be will amount to self indictment. It is self indictment for them to say that they have a genuine concern about the spread of fake news because the government itself, or the current regime, as far as I'm concerned, is the greatest uh, propagator of fake news and disinformation. A government that thrives on propaganda, a government that, that Nigerians have seen does not have any credibility when. It comes to Japan. Oh, I think we're having a little problem with the internet on um, Barista Inibagas. And so let's go to Barista Emmanuel Morin. Um, fake news, according to the minister, is taking a whole new dimension uh, and threatening the existence of the country. Now, I want to dig deep into that. What needs to be done to change that trajectory if, for example, the issuance of these fake stories or this propaganda seems to be rocking, you know, the foundation of the country. Plus, does Nigeria have a serious case of, you know, propaganda that is running around right now that is being bandied that could break us up? Is there anything that we can really place our finger on right now, Barista Morin? Um, I, I hope you can you hear me. Yes, we can. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, there are so many things that, unfortunately, this government is doing that do not uh, add up. Uh, the, is, we have so many problems that are facing us in this country. And all the government is interested in is accusing citizens of trying to sabotage them. Uh, as if the citizens are not Nigerians also. There are so many things that is so easy for government to do. Unfortunately, they will say you are not in government. But we also run our own private businesses. How do you relate the way they are relating on issues of security? And you expect people to be praising you. Like uh, my learned friend had said earlier, it's important that government does its business of governance. If government does its business of governance, why would people uh, create uh, avenues to frustrate the government? I, I, don't, I don't think that that's feasible. But are you, say, are you saying to us that there are not people, because I mean, there's information everywhere, especially on social media. There have been cases where publications were made, uh, you know, with letterheads that looked like it was coming from a certain government. I mean, an example, a good example is what happened, you know, during the Muslim holiday. Uh, 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 there was a secular that was going around saying that there was a third day of holidays for everyone. It was coming from the office of the head of service. I mean, there's, there's, there's information that is out there like that that could also not be in the best interest of Nigerians. But um, my question is, do we have any information that could rock the foundations of this country and try to break us up? Because this is what the minister is insisting on, that... These, these fake news or propaganda is trying to break the nation up. But listen, the government itself has all control over the media. They spend so much money on the media. Why is their voice? It is because of the conundrum they have created. 
nobody knows who is speaking for government. Nobody knows who is speaking, who is not speaking for government. That's a problem. The government creates a lot of confusion. Look, it's a problem. Plus TV, no, you know, when you tune into this channel, it's Plus TV you are listening to. But government, look at what happened to the issue of 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 of, of uh, burglary in the, in the home of the chief of staff. The the uh, special advisor to the president came out first of all and denied it. and said it was it, it's not true. Then suddenly he deleted the tweet. Give me a break. You you are the creation of of this crisis. They could do better. And unfortunately, and unfortunately, not one of them is a novice in governance. For several years, the, the special advisor to the president on media was a, was a to uh, vice, uh, former vice president Atiku. And he was in government from 1999. So they know what, they know what to do. Okay. The minister for information has been in, gov in the opposition and in the, uh, in the um, former AD for years. They know what to do. They're, they're creating these problems for us. Interesting. Let me ask you. Uh, let me ask a question, and this is purely about social media. Um, we also we know that social media has its plus and it, it has its negatives, um, but now we we see that you know, like I explained at the beginning, there's fake news. There's facts, there's truth, um, there's propaganda plus. I mean, is it just the job of the media? Because a lot of people keep saying the media has to do its job. But the media, yes, of course, is saddled with the responsibility of making sure that if it filters out all of the fake news, uh, it double checks, it, it fact checks before it puts out information. But then again, when you live in an era or you stay, in, you know, you are in a, an enclave where information is not given when you need it, and so there's room for speculation, uh, what does the media do? The media obviously has to keep fighting to, you know, tell the stories that needs to be told. For example, and I'm not trying to put anybody on the chopping board, there is, when you tune into media houses that are purely government owned, the story, obviously, is of praise singing. But then, of course, if you want objectivity and you want to hear some other parts of the stories that are not being published, obviously, you need to go to private media. So yes, the media has its own problems. But how do we deal with sieving information on social media? Um, people would ask about um, the NOA and the likes of those people who are supposed to be orientating and giving more and more information on, as to what Nigerians need to know, what they should do and what they shouldn't do. But those people are missing in action. So we, you are left with the traditional media, and you are also left with governors, uh, the government aides, the presidential aides, and social media speculators. Where do we draw the line? Who is to educate Nigerians other than the media? Uh, you know, I, I need us to look at America in this regard. The ZOE. There is the television for the for Congress. There is also the media arm of the presidency. Despite all this, there is the private media. Nigeria is not different. All the the, the government media needs to do is up its game. They do not need to take people who are loyal to, go to, the, to, uh, to the president. They need people who are loyal to Nigeria. They need to set, take message. When we were young kids, we were all listening to NTA. We woke up for 9 o'clock news, for 6 o'clock news. But who remembers NTA again? You must give people what they want to listen to, the truth. If you are the mouthpiece of government, but who determines? But, but right you, that's my question, Barrister Emmanuel. Who determines what the truth is? The who determines is the people. If you lie to me consistently, I will not come to you again. Is the people? Is the, the people you serve? Is the market? Okay. Is the market? 
Okay, finally, because we're out of time, quickly, what should the government of the Buhari administration be prioritizing right now? I know that fake news propaganda is an issue worldwide. I mean, India has the highest number of fake stories and fake news because of social media. But what should we be prioritizing right now in Nigeria? Now, what do you do about this kind of news? When you match proper news with fake news, people choose. They make their choices. Look at the problem that came up with Trump and Biden administration. People decided to follow the truth. We follow the truth. We are discerning people. We, I, my learned friend in Iberia, the the death of a young lady in Akwaibo. When um, uh, 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 Odein brought up, David Odein brought up his analysis, the, the, the commissioner of police had to respond because the people could see reasoning. Let us give to the people, let us not believe that treat Nigerians as if we are all idiots. We are reasonable people. Okay. We, determine, we can determine fake news. Okay. Well, we have to go. Unfortunately, we do not have time. Inibar F. Young and uh, Emmanuel Morin are both legal practitioners. Thank you very much for being part of the conversation. We have to go now. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we will be uh, listening to what Nigerians have to say about state policing and restructuring. Stay with us. We need it. As in when you, as in when you look at what's happening in Nigeria right now, the issue of insecurity, as in especially the north, as you can see what's going on there, as the people are not safe again. So my own, as for my own opinion, I think we need it. Each, each state should have a state police. If you say we need a state police, just look at it and the instance of uh, last month, the way they make last month to be existing. If you give last month a gun, it will be worse than a police stop. So if you have a police officer, I mean police, uh, police, uh, state police, they are not trained and you just employ them. So one of these things, you just have to look, look at it before you do it. We even local government police, we need it because the insecurity is too much in Nigeria. No. Because state police will cause all this tribalism issue. Yes, for me, I think I we need state police. Uh, that will bring at least security, internal security, local security for me. For me, I just feel like we need state police. It, in conjunction with the federal police, we should be regulated by the federal police. Here's my take. Misinformation and fake news gains ground in places where proper information isn't put out or isn't accessible. Now, we need our government to be more expressive and plunge all possibilities or plug every possibility for speculations and making up stories that are untrue. The Ministry of Information and all media aides attached to Mr. President ought to be in sync and agree on whatever information that they put out. The traditional media, which is us, has already been saddled with that responsibility of giving factual, truthful information, double checking and making sure that no misinformation is rolled out. Social media, like I said earlier on, has its problems. We all must make sure and take note that everything that's online isn't real. It may look real, it may even feel real, but it may not be real. So before you repost that tweet, before you retweet or share any information whatsoever, please verify and double check because lives may depend on it. And guess what? The life you save might just be yours. I am Mary Annicole, thanking you for watching.